Hi, my name is Madison Webb. And my name is Leanne Huber. And we are members of Inspire Science Ambassadors and Society of Women Engineers, or as we like to call it, SOSWI. We are a club that focuses on strengthening science literacy in the community, both inside and outside Inspire, aiming to nurture curiosity and a passion for discovery. At last year's gala, we gave this TED Talk about Inspire's action on plastic pollution. Now, we are here to give you a quick rundown on plastic pollution. So first of all, what's the problem? The problem is that we produce too much waste. According to the EPA, we produce 4.48 pounds of waste per person per day, and much of this waste ends up in our oceans. According to Chico News and Review, 4 to 12 million metric tons of plastic ends up in the world's oceans annually. So think of all the plastic that has ever been created. Well, the UN Environmental Program finds that 9% of this plastic has been recycled, 12% has been incinerated, and the remaining 79% of all plastic ever created accumulates in landfills and dumps or has been littered in the environment. According to the Center for Biological Diversity, plaster, plastic covers 40% of the world's ocean surfaces. That's almost the same amount of surface area that the continents take up. Plastic waste, whether in a river, an ocean, or on land, can remain in the environment for centuries. The same properties that make their plastics so useful, such as their durability and resistance to degradation, also make them nearly impossible for nature to completely break down. Most plastic items never fully disappear. They just break down into smaller and smaller pieces until they become microplastics. Plastic pollution is harmful to animals. Marine litter harms over 600 marine species, and um, some conservationists estimate that at least 100,000 mammals and birds die from plastics each year from things like entanglement, choking, or ingestion. The variety of life in an ecosystem is called biodiversity, and harming biodiversity harms us. The way this affects us is that when the variety of animals in or when the variety of animal populations is affected, so is the ecosystem that they live in. Ecosystem processes um, naturally do things like form soil or pollinate, regulate water, um, provide food and raw materials, and many more other things. When we lose animal species, these systems become less stable, which hurts all of these processes on which we depend. A large cause of all of this is single-use plastics. They're everywhere in today's society. Some of the most common single-use plastics are cigarette butts, drink bottles, food wrappers, which, and then food wrappers, which include cups or grocery bags. And all of these things are things we see on a daily basis. The world produces more than 400 million tons of plastics every year. And 36% of this plastic goes towards the production of packaging, which is a single-use material designed for immediate disposal. So we know what you're thinking. This is terrible. So what can we do on an individual basis to mitigate plastic pollution? Well, the most important thing to remember is the classic reduce, reuse, recycle. Reduce consumption of single-use plastics by looking for products that have less plastic packaging, or even none at all, by bringing your own containers. Reuse plastics that you may otherwise throw away, like washing and reusing Ziploc bags, and reusing comes with the added bonus that you don't have to spend money on the same product to buy it new. Um, recycle what can be recycled to allow the plastic to continue to be used in new forms before it reaches the landfill. So what now? I want you to stop and think about one thing that you can do to mitigate our plastic pollution problem. Maybe you take a pledge to be more mindful of your plastic purchases, or maybe you decide to replace your single-use mask with a reusable cloth mask. And maybe you are skeptical, and if you are, good. Then research and find evidence based on statistics that help inform your decision making. Do you have questions about this PSA? Is there something on here that you're interested in learning more about? Do you want to learn more about plastic pollution and recycling, or even the psychology of the decisions we make surrounding plastic pollution? SOSWI is currently working on developing more TED Talks that are going more in-depth to plastic pollution and science literacy. Be on the lookout for us in the spring. Thank you for listening, and we hope to see you in the future.